Good morning. Guess what? It did not rain last night. Bummer. So we're gonna go start the irrigation stuff up today. That'll be fun. Yep. yep. Well, let's go see what our irrigated corn looks like. I see a lot more castles than the last time I was up here. And I expect it to be getting not terribly dry, but dry enough that we can start pumping water. Getting tall. We got tassels with pollen hanging off of them. We're pollinating right now. Critical timing, so keep the water moving. Came back to where the pump is just to check stuff out, make sure everything looks okay, made sure our river screen was clean and everything looks good there. The river's just a touch murky today, but it's getting pretty clear. Um, corn is drastically different than when we were up here. What day did it rain? Tuesday? Wednesday? When did we shut this off? Last Tuesday? It's been a week. Drastically different. Um, we've got a little bit of fertilizer left. This tank is empty. We need to take that home with us. I changed some wiring up here so you guys will remember back before we'd harvest. Uh, we were working with this Farm HQ box from uh, this Coda Farm Technologies. And um, the traveler side of it, the one on the reel, is working really well. But we're having some issues with this one at the pump. Um, I had added this relay to separate the 277 volts that's running through my push buttons here from the 12 volts in this box to keep the, the, the high voltage out of that box. Well, it seems when I did that, uh, I pulled, I, I, there's a relay in here that when it gets a signal from either my phone or from the other box on the reel, it'll shut the pump down. And it does that by, through a relay in here that is either normally open or normally closed. In this case, when I hooked it up to this relay, I used it as normally open, so when the relay activates, it sends power to this one, which then breaks this current running through my starter here. Uh, basically, it's the simulating pushing the stop button, okay? Um, when I did that, it seems to have fried the relay in here, or at least to the point where it no longer makes contact. And when I talked to the people at Farm HQ, they thought that I was probably putting too much current through it. And I'm like, well, how, how can I be too much current? Because it's 12 volts, because I'm coming out of this power supply that is supplying the 12 volts to power the box. And then I was going out of that, through their relay, out of it, through the signal wire, into this relay. And it says, coil input ratings, 10 to 30 volt DC, 20 milliamps. Like that's nothing but maybe that's a minimum I don't know anyway anyway that box quit working after the first time it worked once and then it wouldn't go again and I think that had something to do they thought it had too much current going through it so I tried hooking this one back up this is the one that doesn't have a cell antenna it wouldn't acquire a signal I don't know we can go back to that one if we need to um, but I just took this relay out because this box before I got the one with the cell antenna on it this one or the external cell antenna this one was working and it was working with the 277 volts through it so I just went back to that because if I test this box now what I get is continuity on two of those pins when it's not relay or the relay is not triggered and then when you trigger the relay there's no continuity on any of them so it's breaking it's breaking the circuit but it's not it's not engaging the the other the normally open side of it to close it. So uh, this should work. So we just went back to basically what we had before with the box with cell antenna. I know that was confusing. I'm sorry. We're testing stuff. I'm still working on it. We're going to get this one figured out. The one on the traveler's working just fine. We're going to go get that set up, pull the gun out and get it going. We do need to change oil in our generator. I probably should have brought the stuff up here to do that right now. I didn't, so we're gonna start it up and run it and we'll probably change it tomorrow morning. Now we technically have two runs left to finish this field the second time over, to have done the whole field. But when you get almost two inches of rain, it's kind of like a giant reset button, right? The whole field's on the same plane again. And so we're not gonna finish these two runs. We're actually gonna go back to where we started and start over on the third pass and just forget these last two uh, for the second pass because they are unnecessary right now. So we're gonna go back to the, it'd be the, the 
fourth lane from this end. I think it's the fifth lane from the other end where I start counting from usually. Work back to the north. And um, we're going to do that because those are the ones that are right by where my contest entry um, are for the, the NCGA Corn Growers Yield Contest. I want to... I want to push those that corn the most and that's where I've got high populations and we need to make sure we got plenty of water there so that's what we're gonna do so I got to take this down all the way down to where the pump is so I can turn around and then we'll head back the other way and we'll be two lanes down there is where we're gonna start sits outside for a week starts right up imagine that Brock's gonna move our 7520 for us over the lane where we're gonna make the pull and we'll get this going for reference, I am standing on the 4020. Corn's as tall as I am. Impressive, impressive, impressive. Lots of pollen shed happening right now. You can see we got silks. We'll take a look at the corn a little bit when we get stuff set up here. I haven't had this view for a while. Pulling the gun out. It's a little breezy today. It's gonna affect our pattern, but it is what it is. I can't afford to not pump water during the day because it's too windy. We just, it would take way too long to get across the field. So uh, it's all gonna fall in the field somewhere, just not exactly where we want it to. That's okay. So I was just getting ready to fire the pump up, uh, or the generator up, and I checked the oil. The oil level is, is low, a fair bit low, actually. One of the problems with this thing running 24 seven is that I never get to shut it off to check the oil. and. Unless you shut the pump down and you really need to sit and wait and let it sit for a while and I just don't take the time to do it. So um, I need to add some to run it at all. Given that we are due for an oil change anyway, we're just going to go ahead and do it now. So I'm not going to start this up now. We're going to go back. We'll take the pickup back to the farm, grab a couple buckets to drain oil into, grab a couple buckets of clean oil, and uh, we'll get that taken care of. Uh, and then we'll start this up. It'll, it, it's all right. Draining oil slowly adding some fuel got the filter changed a couple buckets of clean oil over there it's all good oil change complete fuel tank is full fire it up Brock there you go run for at least the next four days straight chances of rain I think Friday Saturday chance of rain maybe something, something like that okay we got to run our vac pump to prime the pump, pull the pipe out. Our box is starting up. That's good. We'll test it once we get everything running, but let's go, I guess. The pipe is completely empty. It's going to take a long time to fill it up. We can't see our gun at all anymore unless we climb up way high, but... Uh, Notice how these fittings all leak when it's not under pressure. As soon as the pressure builds up in there, those seals expand and seals the pipe right up. So our main center path is very dry right now. It's, or I mean, I shouldn't say very dry, but it is, there's not any mud holes at the moment. So that's good. We're about to make some, but right now we're in good shape. So our uh, Farm HQ box is online, connected, blue light. That's good. So we'll, um, We'll get everything tested once we get her started or uh, up the pressure. Oh, we could plug in our uh, fertilizer too. We are going to use this up. We got 350 gallons and that's it. We're not going to do any more uh, fertilizer once this tank is empty. He just he just took my truck and left. Okay. I thought he was going to hook up to this tank because we got to take that home and he just left. And I'm like, well, what the heck, dude? Cause we gotta go start the traveler up and stuff and uh, he's got a field fire call so now i get to walk yay me all right i see the smoke from the fire you do not see any water yet it takes a while all right i think um I think I figured out how to do a split screen deal on my phone where this is going to work and I can show you that we can shut the pump down from here. So I've got the Farm HQ app pulled up. I'm going to hit the toggle button and hit submit, or I agree and submit, and boom, shut her down. Yes! It's working. Now we can start it right back up. 
because we want power there. But it's working, it's working, it's working. That's awesome. So apparently 277 volts is not too much for that Farm HQ box, uh, but for some reason 12 volts from a power supply is. I don't know, but it works. So we're gonna leave it like it is. Let's go get our traveler started up. We got a long walk to make. All right, so here's our uh, Farm HQ app, doing a little screen record on my phone here. Scroll up here to where the field is and you can see the location of the pump and the reel. If we click on the pump, it pulls up this bottom here. They've changed this a little bit since the last time I used it, so they're updating stuff, but uh, shows the 171 PSI at the pump. And this controls is where we can turn it on and off from here. Don't want to do that right now. Um, what else is there? You can hit this button to refresh it. It's probably not going to change anything because, well, it's doing the same thing it was when I pulled it up the first time. 172 PSI now. So anyway, uh, the other one, the R there is the real and it is showing, well, 114 PSI, but let's refresh that. It might be more now. 141. There you go. Reel is stopped. I have not gotten to it yet. I'm still walking to uh, start it up. But uh, once I get that started up, it'll show me that it is reeling in. It'll show me how much of it is done there. The distance right now is zero. We pulled it 1193 feet and um, it'll give me an, a speed of how fast it's being pulled in and an estimated time uh, that it will be completed, which is super handy. And if the reel for some reason stops, either short of being pulled all the way in, or once the, it is done, it'll send the signal to the pump to shut the pump down, which is awesome, awesome, awesome. So we can also go in here and click devices. And here's the reel, we can click on that and get a little bit more, I think, yeah. 1193, we can look at our pressures, see the GPS there uh battery 13 volts so and it shows where it's at in the field this is different so i've gotta go play with it a little bit shows the last what it's been told to do or yeah updates cool so that's that that's the that's the website everything looks good right here let's see what we've got for footage on our hose 12, 16. We're always about just under 20 feet off, or just over 20 feet, I guess. And I don't know if that's in some of the configuration setup stuff that I put into the Farm HQ. Um, but it, it doesn't matter how far I pull it, it always is about 20 to 25 feet short. So anyway, we can go ahead and fire this up. Oh well, yeah, I brought gas, but Brock took it. Okay, and we gotta adjust this. This is our speed compensation. For when we get extra wraps on the reel and now we can check our speedometer 24 25 that's what we want engage and away it goes this is a 10 hour pull it is come on 11 19 so what's that 9 30 a little over 10 hours it'd be 1200 feet would be 10 hours so 9 30 tonight but we'll be able to tell because it'll tell me go check those guys out if you got a hard dose traveler go check them out they sorry they've been very helpful with getting everything set up and trying to figure out some of the little nuances of my my system my system is complicated compared to a lot because we use a generator instead of a an engine driven or a pto driven pump um, which, yeah, it complicates things a little bit, so, but they've been helpful. It's a really cool system. It makes my life easier up here. Hard nosed travelers are enough work as they are. Make it easier on yourself. So this corn does look really good. We should get out and stop and actually look at it, shouldn't we? It's, uh, it's just pushing the tassels out, right? So we're, we're, we've got tassels, uh, but they're not fully exposed and extended, but we do have silks as well and we are shedding pollen on some of these plants. It's just starting to pollinate. It's what I would consider R1 corn. But like, if you look at, uh, look at that tassel right in front of us there, can you see that, focus in on it? There's no pollen shedding from that one yet. But if you look out there, see those anthers hanging off of that one? A few on that one. 
that's where the pollen is shed from, right? So it's gonna come off of that tassel where these anthers are hanging off. This one's got a few, eh, not really. This one's got a few. Right there, and the pollen falls down. It is wind driven and it falls down on these silks, which then are attached to each kernel. Each kernel has a silk and it goes down through the silk and pollinates the, uh, the ear, the kernel, to help produce grain. So you can see this corn looks really, really good. It's very green, it's very healthy, it's very thick. Very thick, because we planted it very thick on purpose. Uh, but even when we come out here a couple of rows, we're pretty green most of the way to the bottom. Now I do see a little bit of firing on some of these leaves. That's a little bit dry weather driven. It's a little bit, maybe a nitrogen deficiency shows up as uh, yellowing on the edges of the leaves. Um, I'm pretty sure, is that right? No. Nitrogen down to midrib. Potassium on the outer leaf. I don't know, one of them, one nutrient deficiency is when the leaf yellows from the outside in, the other is when it yellows from the center vein out. I can't remember. I thought it was nitrogen that's outside in, but I could be wrong. I could be wrong. It could be the middle. But anyway, I'm not worried about these bottom leaves because look how much sunlight's getting to them right now. None. We're capturing it all with the upper canopy, and uh, so I'm not, those leaves aren't really doing much for us. <coughs> we'll take a look here for any leaf diseases. We've got some spots here and there, but I don't know if that's disease or just from the leaves rubbing and bumping into each other it kind of rubs some chlorophyll off sometimes um, I've heard a little bit of some disease presence in the area uh, a little bit of tar spot getting started some gray leaf spot but it's still pretty early to really see those symptoms this is the time of year where we start the infection and um, it takes two to three weeks or more to actually show up so the dry weather is gonna help slow the disease down but we're gonna spray fungicide anyway because this corn is dang good. Look at that, what's that? Is that bug poop or is it a tar spot? It doesn't wipe off. I think that's tar spot. That dark spot right there. If it wipes off, it's not tar spot. That does not wipe off. Yeah, that's not a good sign. Get the fungicide sprayed. There's another lesion right there. That is tar spot. No doubt in my mind that's tar spot. You see a few if you look around. Oh no. Oh no. Plane's coming this week, so we're way ahead of it. That isn't going to kill us here yet, but um, yep. Uh, so for those of you not don't remember or weren't around last year, we have a disease that we've started to get here. Last year was the first year we saw it on a widespread basis, but it's called tar spot, and it will absolutely devastate our corn. Uh, from the time you start seeing infections, like now, till the time this corn is dead, about four weeks if you don't spray it. So by the middle to end of August, if we did nothing in here, and the conditions are still favorable, weather conditions, uh, this corn could be completely dead and just shut down. So it's important that we protect it. There's another lesion. It's here, it's here. Go scout your fields, get your plane lined up, or your haggy. I've been planning this for a long time because I knew it was coming. Brock's back from his fire run. Cleaning the bean head. Oh, look, you're almost done. Oh, half done. Cool. It wasn't going to take much. We're not being super thorough, but wanted to get that black dust off of the sheet metal and stuff and all of this chaff that was on the cutter bar. And yeah. While Brock works on cleaning off the uh, bean head there, we are gonna take the combine outside and do a little blowing off on it, just to get some of the more of the loose stuff off. Did a little bit in the field before we brought it up, but we can do a little more with the leaf blower and then we can wash the side shields down. Maybe we'll try and get that done today too while we got the power washer hooked up. Well, the combine's not too bad. It's not terribly dirty, but this is a dirty, crappy job. Fortunately, there's some wind today, so it'll blow the dust away from me, but... Just trying to clean it up a little bit. Well, how's that? Doesn't look too bad to me. 
I got a lot of crap off of it, especially under there. Probably some still over here because this side was in the dust. Yeah. Well, we did pretty good. Okay, you got the uh, bean head done, so we're gonna start working on the combine. Starting with foam cane. Start at the bottom with foam. Just trying to clean up the outside shields and get that black stuff off. We're not cleaning the combine because, well, we're not done with it. We do our throat clean in the winter. You guys know you've been around long enough to see that, right? Foam me. We got it foamed up good. You just gonna hit it with the power washer now, and it should clean it up pretty well. Oh yeah, there's that beautiful green John Deere paint with a ceramic coating on that's making it bead dried off. Look at that, beautiful. I figured it wouldn't take much. All right, let him work. This stuff's working pretty good. I'm sure somebody's gonna ask. This is uh, McGuire's snow foam something. I don't know, it's, I bought it at O'Reilly's I think. It's just a generic soap. All you need is soap. Any soap does just fine. Some foam more than others. That's what I've learned. But this side of the combine's good. So before we start sticking stuff back in the barn there, I got Brock cleaning the floor up from when we were working on stuff. Uh, Phil tells me that we have a leaky O-ring on a solenoid on the grain cart again. We fight this fairly frequently. Uh, I see oil. Let's see what we're dealing with. Right in there, it's this solenoid. We've had this before, I don't know if we don't have quite the right O-rings or what the deal is, but we can't get one that lasts. Yep, for sure. It's that O-ring. Couldn't, it, the whole thing was loose because it untwisted without twist. This, this cap should come off and the solenoid should, or the, the magnet should come off of the inner piece and the whole thing twisted out, so. It just got loose. I don't know how we get it tight and keep it tight. Anybody need some float arms for a RD40F? I think they fit 740FD or probably the 35s and the 45s and other size heads as well. I've got four of them I don't know what to do with. And an empty crate. That we can burn. What do I do with those? I don't know. Anyway, our floor is about clean so we're going to get the combine in here. I want to try, I'm going to try really hard. I don't know if we're going to make it, but we're going to put the combine in over here and we're going to try and get the grain cart and the bean head in also. We might have to unhook the grain cart, but I think we can get it. I think that'll work. I think we got room. So Brock's going to take the forklift and back that uh, header cart in there. Uh, you guys remember how my kids have completely worn out and destroyed their gator? We had to put new rear tires on it. We've uh, had to put new gearboxes in it. The front tires are, are about shot, although I foam filled them and it prolonged their life a little bit, but yeah. I upgraded. Check it out, check it out. We found a cheapy go-kart. Well, kind of cheapy. I think this one's actually pretty good. I'm, I'm pretty sure we've got electric start. We've got reverse, we've got Remote kill switch, this thing? I don't, we'll see, I don't know. We gotta put her together and find out. Well, after a little bit of trial and error and just seeing what fits where, I think we've got ourselves a go-kart. Right, we need some gas, I haven't tried to start it up yet. But, and we need some air in the tires. But it seems to be pretty good. There's even, I don't, I don't know what, I don't know what the buttons do. It's got lights, look at this, look at this. Where the lights, oh, it's this button. No, that's. There you 
go. Holy cow. We got lights. We got. Oh no. We're going to have to disconnect that. <laughs> Kill switch. What's this? Whoa, electric starter. All right. All right. All right. We need some gas. So here's Nathan. He's bound and determined to drive this thing. Knees are at his ears. Can't even put the feet underneath. Go, Nathan, go! That, that, that might be faster than 12 mile an hour. This might be too much. That, yes. This might be too much. It's got brakes! And there he goes. Perfect size to go kart for the lane. We're gonna see how fast it goes. I got a speedometer here in the gator. He's gonna hold that thing to the floor. 15. And that's with Nathan in it, so I don't know if it'll go any faster with kids. 15 mile an hour. Yeah. For sure. Maybe a little too fast. Maybe too big of a jump from the, the little gator to the go-kart. Dang. They're gonna have some fun. <laughs> well this little thing's gonna be fun. It, they're gonna die. My kids are just gonna they're gonna die. But I do have this button. <laughs> there's there's got to be a governor speed control somehow some way there's got to be a way to slow this thing down because that's pretty quick yeah well that's pretty cool the boys will enjoy this I did buy them helmets. They're over there on the steps. They're gonna have to wear helmets on it, and I gotta try and figure out how to tame the speed down a little more. I adjusted the stop out on the uh, gas pedal so that it's not so aggressive, but it still goes 12 mile an hour. All right, enough playing. We had to get the tractor back up here since Brock left me earlier with the truck. Thanks, Brock. You're welcome. You wanna tell everybody where you went? Uh, I had a field fire. And what caused said field fire? Arsonist. Yeah. Wheat field. Yeah, it was a wheat field. Standing wheat? It was not. Just harvested. Straw, windrows? Yes, it was. Yeah. How much of it burnt? Uh, I'd say 10 acres. Well, that's not it was too bad. Right, next to, uh, right next to Waldron, and uh, we had somebody on station, so we had somebody there pretty quick Quickly. To, to stall it. Well, that's good. Yeah. And, There'll uh, probably be more. If you guys remember last year during wheat harvest videos, we had a couple of these back-to-back -back days, and uh, yeah, it's somebody setting them, and um, I haven't caught them, but it's every year it happens, it has for a long time. We got a description this year, though. Oh, we're making progress, maybe. Yep. Look at this corn. Looks awesome. It's so good. What do you think? Well, it's very fast. You got to be very, very careful. The blue helmet is Brayson's, the red one is Ryland's. I'm gonna drive. The... Well, we're gonna take turns, but we're gonna let Ryland do it first, okay? Let's get your helmets on and get buckled and we'll see how it goes. We got helmets, we got five point seat belts, roll bars, I think they'll be okay. How are we doing? Okay, see if you can go all the way around the barn. Oh gosh. <laughs> They're getting the hang of it. Doing really well, actually. Getting a little daring on the corners, which is bad news for the future, but they'll be all right. Um, I told him I'd follow him. We'll go back to the woods with it. So let's go. Heading up to do irrigation. Pretty sweet moon. Well, when I was driving back here, the pump was running. By the time I got through the river and to the pump, it had shut off. So our traveler must have just finished.
good. It means we're right on time. And it means that our uh, Farm HQ box is working. It shut the pump off just like it's supposed to. That's, it's, it's a beautiful thing when things work like they're supposed to. Oh, it was nice having a week off. Let me tell you, it was nice. But I do enjoy being out here. It's so peaceful out in the middle of cornfield. Just me and a couple of tractors and a water gun. You got beautiful corn. You got moonrise. It's it's a perfect calm night out here. I mean, there's there's something about this. Another tractor with a dirty window. They should buy stock in Windex. Owner out. This is a pull towards the road. It's almost a full pull. If I was to pull it to the edge of the field, it would be a full pull, but uh, we leave it 150 foot short or so, so we're not blowing water all the way across the road for a real long time. So uh, should be about a nine hour pull, I would assume. Oh no, where'd all this water come from? Oh man. Is that better? Uh, I'm sure this was all dried up before we started. That's all coming out of the pipe. So is the pipe leaking or is it just draining out since I shut it off? That's a lot of water though. That feels like it's leaking. Uh, I just parked the tractor over there. Oh! Now I'm trying to get back to the traveler to my truck. All right, we got the pump started back up. My light works really good. That's exactly what I wanted. We didn't get that tank earlier because Brock took off to go put out a fire. So we'll worry about it tomorrow. I'm not pulling it home in the dark. Thanks for watching today. This one will be done at 7.30 a.m. We'll see you here. Sharp. 7.15. Whatever. A little after 7. We'll be here. Thanks to everybody. Have a great night. Like, subscribe, questions, comments. Leave them down below. We'll see you.